Apparently, Harley Davidson is being taken to court. Surprising, isn't it? Well, not only is the company being taken to court, but the issue itself affects all motorcycle owners. Hello and welcome to our channel. Today, we're going to talk about how Harley Davidson is getting sued and why this affects all motorcycle owners. So, let us begin. Harley Davidson was required by the US Federal Trade Commission to comply with right to repair regulations in late June 2022. The FTC announced at the time that it would be pursuing action against both Bar and & Shield and MWE Investments, the business that manufactures Westinghouse generators for restricting customers' ability to obtain repairs on their own products. The Federal Trade Commission prohibits such behavior. This was seen as a positive development by consumer advocates, hobbyists, and anyone else concerned with the broader right to repair war currently being waged across numerous industries. At this time, in early August of 2022, two federal class action lawsuits have been filed against the motor company, one in California and the other in Wisconsin. The claims made in each complaint are similar but distinct from one another. Among other things, the plaintiffs in the California action claim that the defendants broke state antitrust statutes. A breach of federal antitrust law is at the center of the Wisconsin case. Both complaints make reference to Harley's tying its warranty, which buyers could not read in full, to the exclusive use of Harley dealers and Harley parts, which the plaintiffs call tying conduct. Now, if you think about it, Things like this are kind of unfair. Why should the warranty limit you to exclusive Harley dealers who could charge you higher prices when you could possibly go to a normal dealer and get the problem fixed for much less? In addition, the plaintiffs in both cases seek to recover punitive damages from Harley on behalf of themselves and the class as a whole. According to the Wisconsin lawsuit, in June 2022, the FTC instructed Harley to halt this practice going ahead but did not and indeed lacks the ability to reclaim the prior overpayments for parts from all impacted Harley owners. There are two ways in which Harley-Davidson's alleged anti-competitive behavior has hurt the company's devoted customer base. Firstly, by not restricting its guarantee periods to the minimum required by law, Harley-Davidson has been able to charge more money for parts. Yep as we mentioned earlier. The second thing is that riders of these popular bikes have been deprived of the opportunity or access to the full range of aftermarket parts that are available. Though there is a thriving aftermarket for Harley parts, warranty holding customers were restricted from selecting from the full catalog of available components due to the risk of voided warranties if they installed non-OEM components. Now the real question is how this scenario affects bikers. Well, to answer this, we first have to ask whether a motorcycle manufacturer voids your warranty for installing a non-OEM part. Okay, we're going to consider different scenarios. Let's start with mufflers. What if you upgraded your Harley's exhaust system, but then the transmission failed? In our opinion, your gearbox failure should be covered by a warranty because mufflers are not the cause. Or if you decided to upgrade your bike's stereo system and your engine promptly breaks down, it is reasonable to assume that the engine failure was unrelated to the stereo installation and that you're entitled to warranty coverage as a result. Let's say you upgraded the cams in your engine and then a pushrod broke. It is reasonable to conclude that the engine failure was brought on by the new cam modification, ruling out warranty coverage. The fundamental concern is whether or not non-motor upgrades, such as new audio or new handlebars, immediately nullify your powertrain warranty or overall warranty. As those additions do not include the engine or transmission, your warranty should not be cancelled. The second question is whether or not upgrading any part of the powertrain, such as the cams, will immediately nullify the warranty on that part of the vehicle. No that improvement is insufficient on its own. And if you employ a tuner that isn't EPA compliant, Harley-Davidson will immediately void your powertrain warranty. You see, when you take your Harley to a dealership for diagnostics, 
they will immediately know if it has a tuner and, consequently, if it meets EPA standards thanks to Digital Technician 2's automatic detection of tuners. If your tuner is not compliant, Digital Technician 2 will instantly notify Harley-Davidson and your powertrain warranty will be terminated. Now, the Environmental Protection Agency EPA, is pressuring Harley-Davidson and other motorcycle and automobile manufacturers to nullify warranties on the use of non-compliant EFI tuners. The United States Environmental Protection Agency issued a consent order against Harley in 2017, requiring the company to stop selling non-compliant EFI tuners. Also, we can't stand by Harleys that have non-compliant EFI tuners. Therefore, we're nullifying the warranty on them. And certainly, Harley, along with other motorcycle and automobile manufacturers, is nullifying warranties on non-compliant EFI tuners. Let's say you upgraded your muffler but forgot to install an EFI tuner, leading to engine failure. You take it to a Harley shop, and they blame the mufflers for the problem. In any case, the Magnuson Moss Warranty Act may or may not work in your favor. You see, as the buyer, you have the onus of proof in this case. The question is whether or not you think the price is reasonable. It is on you to look for and retain an attorney who might be willing to initiate legal action. After all, getting the bike fixed from somewhere else would definitely be cheaper. But if you're someone who loves principles, then go ahead. We support you. Now, you may be wondering about the response of third-party shops and other aftermarket parts manufacturers. Well, according to Vance and Hines CEO Mike Kennedy, motorcycle riders can breathe easier after the FTC took the step. Although the effects on the motorcycle aftermarket are not yet known, we expect that riders will have additional options for servicing and upgrading their bikes while still under warranty. I pray the days of warning people they'll nullify their Harley warranty if they try to make it sound nicer or run more smoothly are over. So, in the end, you guys must be looking for a recommendation or advice for what you should do with your Harley. Well, the bottom line is that risking your warranty over frivolous mods and upgrades isn't the best thing to do. So, we're going to recommend that you first use your bike as much as you can. Like, really put it to work, so that if there are any issues, then they can be immediately fixed under warranty. But once you think that you've gotten the most out of the warranty, and now want to put in some personal touches to the bike, then we suggest that you go for it. After all, it is your bike. And what's the advantage of owning something if you can't truly call it yours? Well, this was the advice for the people who can wait. There are also folks out there who want to start tweaking their ride the moment they take it out of the garage. Well, for you free birds, we recommend that you don't waste the warranty. But if the need to customize is so great, then go ahead. Nobody can stop you. So, that's all the time we had today, folks. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and do hit the bell icon on your way out. See y'all next time.